I'm still doing this. This is cooking around the world. I'm cooking a dish from every single country in the world in alphabetical order. And I got a long way to go because I'm still only in B. But let's do it. It's Bolivia today. There it is right there. Landlocked between, there's Peru, Brazil. We're up in the Andes. So if you're having trouble breathing, that is why. I'm gonna make the Bolivian national dish today. It's called saltenas. It's like this very popular street food there. It's like this baked pastry. It's like gonna be kind of like a beautiful color on the outside. This really cool like braided look on the very top of it. And it's baked upright, which is different than an empanada. So there's a, there, we're squashing that. Gelatinous stew that's in the center as the filling. And that's one of the big components of this is that it has to be gelatinous because if it's not, then it's just gonna spill all over the place because it's a stew. And uh, I'm gonna just shut up and make it because I'm starving. And I got a lot to do. And I'm gonna be starving for a while because I believe this is gonna take a First, we're gonna start with the dough or it's called masa. Bowl me, please. Thank you. I was gonna use my stand mixer today, and then I was like, you know what? I don't wanna to become too reliant on that thing all the time. So I'm gonna do all this by hand. In my big ass bowl, I'm gonna add in two cups of flour, yeah, one eighth cup of sugar, teaspoon of salt. So I got lard here, just straight up lard. Uh, you know, you could use the old Crisco, vegetable shortening, butter probably, but I'm gonna use just the lard, straight up lard. So I'm gonna heat up my lard. I'm gonna make it melty because I was looking at other recipes online and a lot of them went that route where this one doesn't. But since I'm doing this by hand, I think that's a good call. So I have a quarter teaspoon of achiote powder or anatto, and that is because I wanna add a little color to the bowl, the d bowl. Well, and the dough, especially the dough. So why don't you mix that all together first? A few eggs, second egg. Eggs incorporated. I'm gonna bring over the melted lard. However, I do not want to scramble those eggs. So maybe this needs to cool a second. Eh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the lard has cooled off, added into the dough. Should I use a wooden spoon? Yeah, use a wooden spoon. Okay, now I'm gonna go in by hand. Just a little bit of water, just to get it a little moister. Moist, moist, moist. Yeah, that seems to be the ticket. I'm just gonna knead this together until it becomes pretty firm. A little more water, not more than three quarters of a cup though. Not for me at least. 15, like 20 minutes me sitting here doing this. Uh, it just wasn't coming together, but I think it's nice and smooth now. All right, so I'm just gonna put a kitchen towel over that. I'm gonna let this hang out until I need it. So I gotta make my stew or yote, yote, sorry about pronunciation. Big old saucepan, and on a medium heat, add in a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil. All right, so I got a pound of chuck beef that I cut up into cubes, kinda like, kinda like, come on, come on. God damn it. As small as that. Brown it. Once that's browned, I'm gonna remove the beef, please. It's one diced up onion and half a yellow bell pepper. Also diced. Into that good stuff. If there's any more oil, use it. Check out this special purchase right here. This is called Aji Amarillo. It's a yellow hot pepper paste from South America, Peru, and Bolivia, popular there. I've never tried it before, excited to use it. I'm gonna add it in with this stuff, two tablespoons worth of that, and some for good luck. Depends on how spicy you want it. I need to add two tablespoons or a packet of gelatin powder into my one cup of beef stock. That's got a bloom. I did say one cup, but I think a little more stock would be nice. It's two cups of beef stock. After a few minutes, I'm gonna add the beef back in along with some oregano, ground cumin, two cups of beef stock here with a packet of gelatin in there that has been blooming. And sorry for the confusion, but I'm gonna add in two extra cups of beef stock. Ooh, that's spicy. Some salts, turn that up to a boil. I turn it down to a simmer. Half a cup of frozen peas. 
two potatoes that have been boiled and cut up into those little cubes. Some diced up parsley as well. Season, salt, pepper. So one more additional thing to add just to enrich this whole thing is like a knob of butter. The order of which I've added everything right now has been uh, super confusing. I'm following along to like this authentic recipe and I was trying to stay true to it, but I got lost. It's just the way it was worded just so I found another recipe that is easier to understand, but also I'm like kind of combining them both into one to lead me forward. So I'm kind of making it up as I go too. Anyway, if you're confused, don't worry, so am I. I'm gonna let that simmer for around half an hour, take a deep breath. Once the stew is done, I'm gonna pour it into my braising dish. All right, Jamie, that is great that you have this beef stew, but what are you gonna do with it? How is this gonna go into like a dough? Well, to answer your question, Jamie, it is because I added a whole packet of gelatin into this. Get this into the fridge. So I'm just gonna let that hang out in there until it's all firmed up. I don't have a time frame for that. We got there, gelatinous stew. Uh, however, it is the next day, as evident with my t-shirt. I had to let this thing hang out in the fridge overnight. So I put a cover on it and let it do its thing. Here is the dough. So I don't think the dough needs as long of a rest as, as I gave it, which was overnight, but uh, that's just because the uh, stew wasn't ready. Anyway, I had this hanging out in the fridge with the stew, and I just let it come back to room temperature, and I'm ready to go now. Aya! I gotta tear off pieces of this dough about the size of a golf ball, maybe slightly bigger. How about slightly bigger than a golf ball? Roll this out into a circle. Two tablespoons or so of this stew. So on top of the filling, there's a couple of additions that you can add in. One is olives. So I'm just gonna place like an olive on top. Now I'm gonna try to seal this thing as tightly as I can make it. So now I gotta braid it some way. I'm watching like a video of someone doing this. Pinch it and fold. Pinch it and then I fold it. Ay. This is uh, proving to be kind of difficult. Not great. Not great. I have a hard boiled egg. I'm just gonna cut that like in a quarter. That goes on top of this one. Pinch, fold it over. No, there's a f I'm gonna roll it like this first. Press down, keeping that circle shape. I'm liking the look of that. What is that, like one eighth inch? Some of that stew. An egg on top. Pinch and fold, pinch and fold. I'm hoping I can improve from here, but this is after take three. Put this over on my baking sheet next to the terrible one. Roll the circle around in my hands, press down on it to maintain a circle. Roll, then rotate. Keep that circle shape. Okay, in goes the filling. Let's do another egg. Get the top kissing each other. Honestly, keeping it upright like this is what is keeping the shape. Pinch it, pinch it, pinch it until it's all firmly stuck together. And then let's do the braid. Pinch, lift up, fold. Pinch, lift up, fold. Once you get too much filling in there, it's just game over. That dough needs to be sealed shut 100% with no filling touching the sides. Once you got the green light, let's do that braid. So you pinch, lift up, and then fold. It could be a lot worse, so I'm just gonna leave it as that. This is why we have opposable thumbs, because it's all with the thumb, this braid. Pinch on the one side, then you like take your thumb and push the other side over and just keep moving forward. I think I'm getting a little better, getting better. I'm in complete control if I just hold it in my hand like this. So pinch, fold over. So the sultanias are gonna bake like this with the braid facing up. I'll set the timer for 15 minutes and I'll take a looky-loo then. While the sultanias are in the oven, I'm gonna make up this Bolivian hot sauce. It's called, sorry, yahua, yahua, sorry. Two fresh tomatoes that I'm gonna have, seeds and all this pulp from the tomato, as well as the stem, thank you very much. Now this hot sauce is made with a red Lakoto chili pepper. Not available where we are. So uh, the closest substitute is a serrano. Quarter these, the seeds out of the pepper, two cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of cilantro, and three leaves of basil. All of this into a food processor, along with a tablespoon of olive oil and half a teaspoon of salt. 
pulse it. This is more like a salsa than a hot sauce, so I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna put it into a liquid blender. Feel free to make every single dish in your household dirty while you do this. All right, that's it. Order up. Filling looks good, pastry kind of undercooked. I don't care. That pastry's not undercooked. I feel like I could eat that every single day until the, I was here no more. Street food heaven is what that is. The stew filling combined with that pastry just makes it like this very comforting, very comforting bite of food. Makes you feel good, it's nice and hearty. Now my filling was kind of spicy because I added a lot more of that aji Amarillo. I was gonna choose between the hard boiled egg or the olive on top of that filling. I think I'd go the hard boiled egg. I think that worked better for me. I mean, if you wanted a sleek exterior shine to this bad boy, you could give it uh, an egg wash. Um, obviously, while they were in the oven, some of them separated. Um, by some of them, I mean most of them. Things that are gonna come with experience. You need something fresh to go along with it. So this like hot sauce here was just a good idea. Not too spicy. Mm. A lot of leftover filling, which means I gotta practice. Okay, that's it. That's all. I'll see you in another country that starts with B. Adios.